I want to entitle today's message right out of verse 17, the helmet of salvation. The helmet of salvation. There's an old saying, an idle mind is the devil's workshop. The meaning of this adage is simple. The devil goes to work on minds that are unoccupied. Yeah. <laughs> Truth is, doesn't matter if our minds are idle or not. The devil goes hard at work scouring for opportunities to tempt us to embrace thoughts that are not godly. As Christians, we should desire to think God's thoughts after him. But it is Satan's desire that we think his thoughts after him because his thoughts are against God. And if you know anything about the devil, the devil is crafty when it comes to this too. But the good news is that we will not be outwitted by him because God, through his word, has given us the 411 on the devil's schemes, on his designs. For example, the devil will encourage us to live in our heads. That is to live with our own thoughts. To depend on our own understanding. He will encourage us to reach our own conclusions. He will Encourage us to be all in our feelings. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He'll, he'll, he'll come alongside of us and whisper in our ear that we need to establish our own perspective as right, mm -hmm. rather than looking to God for his authoritative thoughts on the matter. Yeah. Not only will the devil tempt us to live in our own heads, live among our own thoughts, mm -hmm. establish our own perspective as being right, we coming to our own conclusions independent of God, mm -hmm. he will also convince us, hear this, to not seek out godly Say that. wisdom mm -hmm. Say that. or counsel or mediation from mature fellow believers. He will convince us to isolate ourselves. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I know what's best for my life mm -hmm. and for this situation, and I don't need quote unquote other Christians mm. in my business. Wow. Wow. All the while <laughs> he is trying to isolate ourselves to get us to live in our heads because he knows that our hearts are deceptive. Yeah. Yeah. And that we can we can play tricks on our own selves with our own thoughts. Wow. And he will help us in that endeavor. Wow. Not only will he do that he will also bring people into your life and mine who will affirm mm. Ooh, say that. everything you're thinking. Mm. Who have no interest in helping you to discover or embrace God's viewpoint. My, my, my. But they will come and cheerlead you on as it relates to your own agenda, your own thoughts, and your own opinions. Mm. I need to tell somebody, you need to be careful. You, you, need, you need to be very careful My. when you start seeing the same type of people coming into your life mm -hmm. who have no interest in helping you to seek God. Yeah. My, my, my. Be careful because you are in dangerous territory Come on now. when not only will Satan send people to you, yes. he will convince you to start surrounding yourself with people who mm. just want to hand clap you and pat you on the back and mm. affirm your ungodly thoughts yeah. and unwise yeah. thinking. My, my, my. Uh, mm. I'm just trying to help this morning. Come on now. Yeah. Because the devil is not playing with us. Yeah. And he is crafty at what he does. And if we yes. are not careful and if we don't recognize his schemes and understand his schemes and get into God's word so we can know his schemes, we will fall prey to his traps every time. Every time. Right. Now I can be honest for a moment. Come on now. 
I've been there and some of y'all are there or have been there yes, yes, before. Yes. Where you decided that you were going to do your own thing and you didn't need the church, you didn't need Jesus, you didn't need his word, and you were smart enough to deal with life on your own and found yourself entrapped in some sin and some transgressions. Yes, yes. There's a variation of that opening statement I gave to you at the beginning of this sermon. It goes like this. An idle mind is the devil's playground. But far from being a playground, our minds are a part of the battleground where spiritual warfare is raged, is waged. Michelangelo once said, already at 16, my mind was a battlefield at war with my religious faith. <coughs> a polarity of themes and forms, one spiritual, the other earthly. Yeah, yeah. The question becomes, why does Satan, though, focus his attacks on our minds? Mm-hmm. Well, it's because there is a vital link between our minds and our maturity in Jesus. Mm. There is a strong connection between our thoughts and our transformation into Christ. Listen to what Paul says in Romans chapter 12, verse 2. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that by testing you may discern what is the will of God, what is good, and acceptable, and perfect. So instead of being transformed into Jesus, the devil would like nothing more than to cause us to be conformed to this world. Where we are like Plato in their hands, where they can shake us into their mold. So in order to influence us to adopt the unbelieving sinful world's way of doing things, Satan takes aim at our minds. Yeah. Yeah. Because what we think yeah. and how we think mm-hmm. greatly impacts what we do yeah. and how we act. Mm. That's right. So, what can be done about this? Are we just simply at the mercy of Satan? No. How do we guard against the devil's attacks against our minds? That is the burden of the message today. And this sermon will seek to answer that question. How do we guard against Satan's attacks against our minds? I won't make the answer for you because it's right there in verse 17. Paul says, take up the helmet of salvation. Mm -hmm. Roman soldiers wore a physical helmet to protect their heads Mm -hmm. from attack. Christian soldiers are to wear a spiritual helmet to protect our minds from attack. The spiritual helmet, did you notice there in verse 17? He calls it the helmet of salvation. This helmet has nothing to do with earning our salvation. That is not Paul's point. It has nothing to do with Paul saying you need to know how you need to come to achieve your own salvation. No, that has already been done for us in Jesus Christ. His death on the cross for our sins, his resurrection from the dead, his perfect life, all of that has achieved salvation for us. This is not about us achieving salvation. This is about us standing against Satan in our salvation. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. The word salvation here simply means to be delivered. It means to be saved from or preserved. Mm -hmm. So we, Paul says, hear his words, take up the helmet of salvation if you desire to protect your mind from Satan's attacks. And I don't have to convince you, brother and sister, that this is where the devil tends to get most of the victory in yeah. our lives. Yes, right. yes. Because we are not guarding our minds the way that God desires for us to guard them. Right about but God helps us this morning through the Apostle Paul to show us what does it mean then to take up the helmet of salvation. I believe it means at least this that we need to embrace at least three 
ruling thoughts concerning our salvation. There are three biblical ruling thoughts, governing thoughts, fundamental thoughts that will help us guard against Satan's attacks on our minds. Y'all ready for it? Amen. Number one, first, the thought that we need to embrace, the first ruling godly thought that we need to embrace concerning our salvation is that we have been freed or saved from the power of sin. Yes. Yes. We have been saved from the power of sin. A young man was invited to go and see a private animal habitation. When he arrived, he was taken on sort of a safari to see all of the animals that was owned by this world-renowned rescuer and trainer. The young man was in awe as he viewed all of these fascinating wildlife animals. As they journeyed farther in the safari, the young man took notice of a herd or a group of elephants. And he pointed to one of them and asked the owner, why is that elephant dragging his hind leg? Is he injured? And the owner replied, no, far from it. He said, that elephant is as healthy as he can be. He used to be a circus elephant. And unfortunately, his previous owner and master abused him badly ever since he was a baby. And he put a ball and a chain on his hind leg to prevent him from escaping. And he kept him enslaved for years. I came along and I was able to rescue him out of that kind of imprisonment and I brought him here and took those chains off of his leg. So as you can see, there is nothing that has been that is on his leg and has been on his leg for some years. The problem is that he thinks yeah. he is still chained mm. and therefore walks around as if he is bound. Mm. Some of us Come on now. are just like that elephant. We have been saved from Satan and sin by Jesus, but we think we are still chained and therefore continue to walk around to live as though we are Bound. Wow. Wow. The type of thinking, that type of thinking is not from God. It comes straight from Satan. He wants us, that is, Satan wants us to think that we are still enslaved to sin. Yeah. Yeah. But the scripture says in Romans chapter 6, verse 6, we know, we know that our old self was crucified with Jesus yes. in order that the body of sin might be brought to nothing mm -hmm. yeah. so that we no longer are enslaved to sin. Yeah. So as believers in Jesus who have been saved from the power of sin, we no longer ought to buy into that line of thinking yeah. that says things like this. I couldn't help myself. Oh, wait. Wow. The devil made me do it. All right. I can't forgive him or her. I don't feel like I have the power to make the right decision in this situation. Wow. All right. I am not able to let go of that offense. Mm. They made me go off. Mm. They made me have road rage. She drove me or he drove me into the arms of that other individual. Wow. He or she made me bitter. Mm -hmm. Or this line of thinking. I guess I'm not just, um, or I guess I'm meant to be jealous, mm -hmm. envious, mm -hmm. covetous, mean spirit, materialistic, judgmental, a self-centered type of person. I mean, my father or mother was that way. So I guess I, it's just a generational curse or something. Wow. He was an alcoholic. I guess I must be one too. 
She was a manipulator. I guess I have to be a manipulator too. He was a womanizer, so I guess the cards are not in my favor. I'm just going to be a womanizer. She loved money and other material things. I guess that's just my lot in life. The apple doesn't fall far from the tree. I guess these are just the cards I've been dealt. There's nothing I can do about it. The mm -hmm. devil is a lie. Yes, he is. <laughs> That's right. If you are in Jesus, yes. you have been saved from the power of sin yes. and are yes. now able to walk in the newness of life. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. you are yeah. not at the at the at the victim. You are you are not at just the disposal of sin. Yeah, yeah. You are not at the mercy of sin. Yeah. Yeah. And just because your family did it doesn't mean that you have to do it. Yeah, just right. because your father fell into that sin doesn't mean that you have to repeat your father's sinful mistakes. That's right. Or whoever fill in the blank that person, influential person is that you come from. Yeah. Just because you are in the hood, uh, right? It don't mean that you have to become hood. Yeah. Yeah. Hello, somebody. Right. Just because you are spirit may have grown up around spiritual lost people and in, in the spiritual ghetto uh -huh. doesn't mean that you have to just repeat everything that goes right. on. It right. doesn't mean that you just you just have to go in that direction. Yeah, yeah. Because to say you have to or you couldn't or you couldn't help yourself is to say that you are enslaved. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. That's right. That's true. And it is not true. Yes. Mm -hmm. And as your pastor, I want to come by virtue of Paul the Apostle to encourage you and to tell you that is a lie. So you need to stop thinking that way. Yes, yeah. right. yes, yes. We have the power in Christ to walk in the newness of life because he has freed us from the power of sin. Yes. Yes. So I want to tell you in love, get out your feelings. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That ain't where you're supposed to live. Yeah. Right. Get out of your opinions. Yeah. That is not where you're supposed oh, to live. My, 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 my. Get out of what you think yeah. and start thinking God's thoughts after him. Yeah. Well, it's just my perspective. It doesn't matter what your perspective right. is. That's right. That's right. If you are in Jesus, you are not your own. Yeah. You have been bought with a price. Right. He yeah. is your master yeah. and he is your loving Lord. Yeah. And he has life for you. Yeah. But if you continue to go in what your way, you continue to do things your way, you continue to um, do what is right in your eyes, yeah, yeah, yeah. then the end that you're going to receive from all of that is destruction. That's right. That's right. That's right. So first, the first ruling thought is that we need to get this in our spirits. Young person, high school and middle school, get this in your heart. We have been, have been saved from the power of sin. That's right. Mm -hmm. You don't have to give in to lust. Mm -hmm. That's right. You don't have to have premarital sex. You're right, you're right. Talk to her. You're right. You don't have to gossip. That's right. You're right. You don't have to lie. Because sin no longer controls you. That's how this is freeing to you. Yeah, yeah. We have been freed. We've been saved from the power of sin. And we can walk in the newness of life. We can walk in the way that Christ desires for us to walk. We can treat each other how we're supposed to treat each other, how he yeah. wants us to treat each other. Yeah. You can treat your spouse the way that God wants you to treat your spouse. You yeah. can be faithful. Yes, yeah. Hello, somebody. Yeah, you're right. Yes, you can. You can be devoted. You can be single and satisfied. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. Yes, yes, yes. You can forgive. You can let go of the offense. You don't have to be bitter. Has anybody ever? Has anybody ever? ever have witnessed the after fact of giving in to Satan and living in your own thoughts? I just wanted to take a moment because I need, I need you to help me preach the message to somebody. The end result of that is so much damage. And when, you, when God by his grace brings you out of that fog and you turn around and you look back and you see all that collateral damage, all of that carnage that could have been avoided had you got out of your own thoughts
regards to your own feelings and submitting yourself to the opinions of God in the scriptures. I want to encourage somebody. When it comes to your marriage, when it comes to your singleness, don't trust your own opinion. Right. Don't trust your own thoughts. You are so right. We're not called to trust our thoughts. Right. We're not called to trust our hearts. We're right. called to trust God and His Word yes. and His truth. That's right. Yes. Mm. Say that. I don't want to keep pressing here, but I, I, I just feel it. You need to, somebody in here needs to stop because you are playing into the hands of your enemy. When you refuse to get into God's word and around God's people as we seek to help you work God's word into the fabric of your life, when you refuse to do that, you are playing into the enemy's hands. And I can't tell you, this is, so, this, is, this is so prevalent to where we are even as a church. As, as we minister and we shepherd uh, members of our church, it just burdens me. And it burdens those of us who care that there are, there are brothers and sisters in Christ who isolate themselves. <laughs> And who sit in their own minds and allow the devil to put them in the corner. Yeah. Instead of coming out and being transparent and open and open to God and open to his people and open to love and open yeah. to humility yeah. and open to truth and open yeah. to accountability. Because yeah. right. he has nothing good for you. Right. And he yeah. wants to deceive you into thinking that the best right. way to deal with right. your offense or your trouble or that conflict is to pull away and to yeah. be by yourself. Say yeah. that. Yeah. So second, secondly, the second ruling thought that we need to embrace to take up the helmet of salvation and put it on is that we are being saved from the intentions of Satan. Are y'all following? We have been saved from the power of sin. Second thought is we are being saved presently from the intentions of Satan. An unsuspecting man was cornered in an alley near his house by a criminal with gun drawn. This is a real life situation. I'm, I'm, I'm telling you a real situation. The thief ordered the man to turn and face the wall with his hands up in the air. As the man did that and complied, the assailant raised the weapon to his head and pulled the trigger. And nothing happened. He cocked the gun again, put it to the man's head again, and pulled the trigger. Still, nothing. He looked at shock, in shock at the gun, examined the gun, took the magazine out the gun, blew on the magazine, checked the bullets in the magazine, cocked it back in the gun, cocked the gun back, put the gun back to the man's head again, pulled the trigger. Nothing. On each occasion, the gun jammed. So in frustration, the robber just simply pistol whipped the guy, hit him one time in the face, took off with his wallet down the street. When the victim was interviewed, he said, I may have lost my belongings, but I'm grateful that I didn't lose my life. Yeah, yeah. And in, concluded, in conclusion, he said, and I thank God for saving my life today. Yeah. And he was right. The reason why the perpetrator's ultimate ill intentions to take the victim's life didn't come to pass was because God blocked it. <coughs> Y'all here? Yeah. Yes. Our spiritual assailant, yeah. the devil, yeah. has ill intentions for you mm. and I as well. Yeah. Mm -mm. But the reason why you are alive today, yeah. the reason why you are still devoted to Jesus today, yeah. the reason why you haven't ultimately defected from Jesus yeah. is because God jammed his spiritual gun. Yes. Come on now. Come on. <laughs> the devil may have made off with your marriage. Come on. Come on. But you're still devoted to Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. The devil may have made off with a portion of your life. Yeah. 
but you're still devoted to Jesus. Yes. yes. He may have he may have at one point attacked you in your singleness, mm. but you're still devoted to Jesus yes. today. Oh, he may he may have landed a significant blow to your relationship. But your relationship is still standing today. That's right. He may have been the cause behind that very intense spiritual yes. struggle yes. during that tumultuous moment in your life. Mm -hmm. But aren't you glad yeah, yeah. that God yeah. didn't yeah. let the enemy have his full way with you? Yeah. 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 That we ought to be glad that God saved us from some ill intentions that the devil had for us. Yeah. Yeah. He blocked his gun. He jammed his gun. To the young people in the room, to you teenagers, I don't know if you know what all this means right now, but as you keep living and you keep staying devoted to Jesus and you come to know Jesus more and more, you will eventually be spiritually attacked. You hear me? And, and, and even to some degree, you may not have recognized it, but you have been attacked even in your young age. Yeah. But the word to you is, don't fear. You don't need to fear the enemy. No, no. And here's why. If God put a restraining order on Satan yeah. to prevent him from going too far and taking Job's life, God will preserve you as well. Amen. He will intervene in your life when Satan attacks you as well. If Jesus prayed for Peter's faith, to remain after he denied him three times and didn't allow Satan's desire to separate Peter from himself, then Jesus will preserve you as well, even in moments when you blow it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's right. I want to tell you, with Jesus on our side, and as we stand in his strength and put on his armor, yeah. Satan may harass you, yeah. he may hinder you, uh, he may uh, even uh, hurt uh, uh. you, on, but he on. will not be able to come halt on. you. Yes. Yeah. He you. won't be able to stop you. Yeah. But hear this. You gotta, you gotta stand in the Lord's strength. That's it. You gotta put on his armor That's it. so that you can survive his attack. It ain't just going to happen automatically. Right. You got to submit to Jesus. You got to depend on Jesus. You right. got to put this helmet on so that though he may hinder you, though he may harm you, though he may hurt you, yes. he will not be able to stop you. That's good. That's good. You will survive the uh, attack. Come on, somebody. Help me preach. Right. Yeah. Did you, you, you know, you remember that time in your life when Satan attacked? And there was a time when you didn't submit to Jesus. And there was a time on, when you didn't on. put on the armor. Oh, oh and he had his way. He was welling on you. Yeah, come on. Just knocking you all across the ring. Yes. And you got up by God's grace. Jesus intervened and saved you. He, right, he came and grabbed you out the ring real quick. Took you to the corner. Took you to the back. Got, you know, wiped the blood off. Got your swelling to go down. The next time you got in the ring, though, and Satan attacked you, instead of doing your own thing, you submitted to his strength. Yes, you yes. put on his armor. You yes. did things his way. Yeah. And though the battle was intense and though that attack was fierce, mm -hmm. he kept you in perfect peace. Come on, come on. You didn't go out in there and stray away from him. You yeah. didn't commit sin yeah. even though you attempted to do so yeah. many things. But you stayed. You knelt down at that cross and you come stayed come below come Jesus come and under Jesus. And he kept you and weathered yeah. you. Yeah. Helped you weather through that storm. Yeah. Yes. I had somebody say this, that the scripture says, and no weapon formed against you shall be able to prosper. Yeah. It didn't say the weapons won't form. Right. It just said that the weapons won't prosper. Yeah. It didn't say that the weapons won't hurt and he won't get a hit on you. It just said that whatever his goal is in attacking you, it will not achieve its ultimate end Break it down. and purpose. Right. I'll never forget, clear as day, we were in our pre-launch year, right, right out of the starting blocks of our church plant. Satan attacked Harvest Fellowship. Okay. Huh. Many of y'all were not there okay. in that time, but there was a couple that remember. My wife remembers, and Cheryl remembers okay. this, and a couple others remember what happened. I got a call from a member at that point of our launch, of our pre-launch, our core team, and told me 
that apparently there was a woman who went to Antioch, the, the, the former church that I was on staff at, and went was going around with a quote-unquote authorized list of names from myself of people that I wanted her to recruit to leave Antioch to come to Harvest. You see what, and that, and that, and that never happened whatsoever. That, that, that Satan meant right out the blocks. We ain't even got, I mean, we just got good and started. And right out the block, he, whoever this woman was, that, that was ultimately a pawn of Satan, decided to go in and to cause this ruckus and to yeah. cause this chaos, yeah. even, even to the point to where my mentor, my pastor, Dr. Wesley, texted me. And, and, and lovingly admonished me and was like, hey, I don't know what's going on, but I need you to be careful about how you start your church. And I responded to him in this text message, and we had a good conversation in that text message, and he understood what was going on, and I vehemently denied having sent this woman. Like, I, I don't even know who this woman is. I, I, I would have never done anything right. such, you know, such as that. Right. He accepted that. We moved on from there. What the devil was trying to do, huh. he was trying to damage our credibility. Yeah, 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 yeah. You see, if 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 I was siphoning members off from Antioch, uh -huh. then word would have gotten around yeah. that that it is this Absalom, yeah, yeah. That, that he is this this uh -huh. son of the king who is who is trying to take the kingdom yeah. away from his father, so to speak. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. And, and as a matter of fact, to some degree, the devil was successful. Mm -hmm. Because not in terms of dam damaging our credibility, although in the minds of some people, that did happen. Right. He also crippled some of our outside financial support. Mm -hmm. Because as you imagine, when I talk to certain pastors, certain pastors, they would tell me that, you know, man, um, I, I know that you're planting a church and I know that you are requesting some help from me, but I heard mm. all right. that such and such took place. Mm. And I don't know all of the details, but I don't think that's something that I want to get in the middle of. Mm. And even after defending myself and even after saying that, I, that there was no such thing that happened, they still decided to not give financial support. Wow, wow. But, I, but, but we ain't scared. Amen. Yeah. We ain't scared of the enemy because watch this. For every attack of Satan, God has an infinite number of counter moves. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> See what the devil didn't count on is that Pastor Wesley and I would have a conversation some couple of years later. What he didn't count on is that Pastor Wesley would be praying to God at the beginning of 2018. And he didn't count on God putting it on Pastor Wesley's heart to bring me by to preach in June. And he didn't count on, after I preached, that Pastor was going to get on the video and say that, son, we're going to bless Harvest with $30,000. You see, see, God, God has an infinite number of counter moves. And it doesn't matter what Satan's ill intentions are. God knows how to blunt his moves. He knows how to counter his attacks when you submit to God and put on that helmet of salvation. That's not only true for harvest. That's true of your individual life. And some of y'all have seen it. The devil moved one way and God did some little move and countered that sucker and got you out of there. The devil had you in a submission hole and you were just about to tap. God came in. Told you to wiggle your thigh this way. Got, and got you out of that hole. Come on, somebody. Got you out of that relationship. Got you out of that jam. Got you out of that job. Yeah, 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 yeah. Got you away from that person. Got you away from that company. Because God has an infinite number of counter moves to every attack that Satan launches. The third and lastly, the third final thought, ruling thought that we need to embrace if we're going to have our minds protected from Satan's attacks is this. 
that we will be saved from the wrath of God. Mm -hmm. The first rule in five, we have been saved from the power of sin. The second rule in five is that we are being saved from the ill intentions of Satan. And finally, the third ruling thought is we will be saved from the wrath of God. Amen. Romans 5 and 9 says, Since therefore we have now been justified by his blood, much more shall we be saved from the wrath of God. See, the devil deals in discouragement and in despair. Yeah, yeah. He desires to get us so consumed with the here and now, with the battle that is raging yes. presently, yes. in hopes that we will become so disheartened that we want to throw in the towel. Mm. Because we're so weary and tired of having to fight and deal with his attacks. Mm -hmm. But this morning, God wants to encourage us to fight on in, this, in the present by reminding us, watch this, of not only our future, but Satan's future as well. The devil knows his time is short. And he knows that the outcome of his life has already been determined. According to Revelation 20 verse 10, the devil will be thrown into the lake of fire and sulfur where the beast and the false prophet are, and they will be tormented day and night forever and ever. Amen. This spiritual war we are in will end one day. Yes. One day, we will not have to fight anymore. Yeah. Because for us to be saved from the wrath of God, not only says, again, something about our future, it says something about the devil's future. Yeah. Yeah. That there is a day where the alarming, the consuming, the dreadful wrath of God is coming. Yeah. Yeah. And it is coming not only for unbelievers, it is coming for Satan himself. Yeah. Oh, you yeah. trust and believe. The devil ain't gonna he ain't gonna be able to run. Yeah. He 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 only has a limited amount of time. Yes. Yeah. But but when Jesus comes back, ain't no scurrying away. It, it's, it, it ain't no, it ain't no, I'm going to hide under the table. It ain't going to be no, I'm hiding on the rock. It ain't going to be no hide and seek. God, God is going to have the devil right where he wants him. And God is going to have, he's going to sentence the devil to his eternal damnation. Mm -hmm. You see, his, 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 his future is secure. Right. His future is already determined, which is why he is raising so much Cain yeah. in your life. Because he knows that one... If Jesus doesn't come back first, you're going to die and I'm going to die, but then the war is going to be over yes. for us at that point because we're going to be with Jesus in the presence of Jesus. Mm -hmm. But he also knows not only is it going to be over as it relates to your life when you go to be with Jesus, mm -hmm. but he knows it's going to be over because there's going to come a time where Jesus, our Savior and yes. Lord, is going to crack yes. that sky. Mm -hmm. And with a sound of the trumpet of God. Yes. Yeah. With a cry of command. He is going to descend with the voice of an archangel. And we are going to be gathered together with him to be with him forever. Mm -hmm. And Satan, Satan's time is going to be up. Yes. yes. So he is coming, Jesus is. He's coming soon to take us to be with himself forever, and he is coming to sentence Satan to his eternal torment in the lake of fire. So my encouragement as we conclude this message is simply to those of you all and us who are caught in the throes of battle. Don't throw in that towel. I know it can be discouraging. I know it can be tiring, but don't give in to the fight. As you wait for the glorious appearing, and as we wait for the glorious appearing of our great God and King Jesus Put that helmet of salvation on and continue to stand against him. Continue to fight on. I love this hymn. It says, Nevermore we fear the devil. Christ destroyed him on the cross. Stripping off the authorities. Now we live his victory. 
God of peace now crushes Satan under overcoming feet. Our rejoicing overthrows him, shaming every enemy. All day long, sing hallelujahs in the train of vanquished foes. Through our praise, we never leave seated with him at the throne. Never let the lies deceive you. Christ has shut the serpent's mouth. Claim the fact that we have seen him in the lake of fire now. Soon the earth cries out, exalting our returning, shining Lord. Until then, we praise and sing all the glories to our king. Consummated corporate warrior, New Jerusalem are we. One with ascended husband, Lord of Lord and King of Kings. Hallelujah. Christ the conqueror, every day we're one with him. Walking in him constantly, living Christ our victory. Brothers and sisters, I don't know what you're having to deal with today. I don't know what you're going to have to deal with in the future. But be assured of this, that your enemy is going to attack you. Mm -hmm. And he's going to attack your mind. Yes, yes. But in those moments, you need to take up the helmet of salvation. Mm -hmm. You need to believe God over your own Amen. words. You need to believe his truth over your own right. so-called truth. Right. You don't need to live your truth. You need to live his truth. Yeah, that's right. And you need to put on that helmet of salvation and know that you have been saved from the power of sin. Know that you are being saved from the ill intentions of Satan and know that you will be saved from the wrath of God. So hang on in there. Keep fighting. Keep trusting. Keep believing. Keep thinking God's thoughts after his. And watch God protect you. Protect your mind even in the heat of battle.